Hi, remote students, which I can just say Andrew and Taylor. I hope that you guys are doing well. It's Tuesday morning and I'm a little behind in getting this video out to you all. Um, I chose not to video in class because it was so short, but I just basically wanted to talk with you about um, the next, this week and next week. Um, congratulations, because you guys have completed your mini thesis draft, which is huge. Definitely the steepest part of the mountain. Um, now, <clears throat> now that it is about revision, and I really, really want you all to take that seriously because um, revisions are the difference between uh, a mediocre paper and a really great paper. And I also just want to say that what you got on your rough draft, if you leave your rough draft the same without revisions, you're not guaranteed to make that good of a grade, okay? So <clears throat> I expect, I, I'm going to have a little higher expectations, especially in regards to grammar for your final paper. So um, you have a document there called Steps to Revising Mini Thesis. And what that it, I'm going to do is just break this into parts. And I'm not giving my class the whole document, like I'm giving you guys the whole document. But um, I'm going to tell you what we're going to work on for the next couple days. So we're just looking at page one of this document. And um, the very first thing you'll see at the top is to make a printed copy of your entire mini thesis. Um, we're going to, in the next week, be revisiting every paragraph. We're going to start with intro and conclusion today and tomorrow. And then we'll look at com um, confirmation points, history. And I just think it is much better to have a printed copy where you can see everything lined, out in, um, lined up in front of you without having to scroll the screen. So um, I strongly recommend it. I can't enforce it, but just from my experience, that is going to be the better way to do your mini thesis. Um, <clears throat> okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at intro and conclusion. Those are the, the kind of the bookends of your mini thesis. And um, I always have an eye to, not only are you turning in a paper, but you're creating a speech. And when we come back from spring break, we're gonna jump into the speech making process. And so um, your intro is so vital, not just for me as the grader of your paper, but also for your audience. And so um, people will form an opinion of your paper and eventually your speech based on the first one minute, based on your introduction. So I really want you to press back into it. I don't want you to just slap an introduction in there that's just eh. Um, I want it to capture attention. Maybe a really good, um, um, tribute is if I can remember the introduction. Um, Andrew, you, I remember your introduction. It's not anything extraordinary, but you just used some language that kind of made me smile and convicted me simultaneously. So, um, Taylor, I don't remember your introduction, okay? So, if you could, um, just revisit. How could I capture attention? And this is a great um, place to talk to parents, to talk to friends, to get feedback. Um, you guys have really good insights as editors. So um, give that feedback to one another, solicit opinions from older siblings or from parents. Um, you want to look and uh, make sure it's, it gives necessary background, smooth, coherent progression. Your intro is more like a river it's not building blocks that are choppy, it should flow. So you wanna make sure that it flows. We've talked about your thesis being in parallel form. So your um, supporting arguments all need to be words, phrases, or clauses that are the same part of speech and, and you guys have both done that beautifully. Um, but what we haven't talked about is when you're giving a speech, there is a strategy to your order of arguments. And you typically want to start with your weakest argument. Hopefully you don't have any weak arguments, but maybe like your least supported or least convincing argument and you want to build to your most convincing so that your third supporting argument is going to be your strongest argument. That, that's going to leave the greatest impact on your reader or on your audience. So I want you to look at your, um, now that you've worked through the whole draft, I want you to figure out, well, what is my strongest argument? What do I want to be my third point? And whatever that order is going to be in your paper, it needs to be reflected in your thesis, okay? So the same order you have supporting arguments in your thesis should reflect the order of those supporting arguments or confirmation paragraphs in your paper, okay? 
And then, um, are there any repeated words or ideas? This is a great time to look at language and just go, am I using decrease over and over again? Am I using diversity over and over again? Um, <clears throat> am I using fair? So, so we wanna expand our vocabulary and look for ways to um, um, strengthen the language and get rid of repeated phrases. So that's your intro. We've talked about intro is kind of like, a, a, it starts wide and it narrows. And um, your conclusion is the opposite. It starts narrow and it widens. It, it ends broadly. And um, so neither, oh, I can't remember. I don't really remember your, your conclusions. I'm so sorry. But, um, you know, your topic sentence of your conclusion needs to have a concluding um, transition, like in summary and conclusion. I think you both did that. Um, and it just needs to be a paraphrase of your central claim. You don't have to list all your supporting arguments because right after that is going to be a sentence for each confirmation point in your paper. And um, this is not to just be a regurgitation of your topic sentences. You need to be reminding the reader of some of your evidence. So I gave the example in class of, um, you know, somebody's doing a paper on iPhones. And so um, one of his confirmation points was that iPhones cause negative behavioral effects in, in teenagers. So he certainly wouldn't wanna say that in his conclusion, you know, that iPhones cause negative behavioral effects. Instead, he would want to tell us what are those effects, remind us of what he's already proven in the paper. So um, iPhones cause negative behavioral effects such as depression, anxiety, and even suicidal thoughts. Okay, so you wanna just remind the reader and make those summaries a little more specific than what your topic sentence was. And then the last part, um, well, not the last part, well, kind of. <laughs> um, you wanna broaden at the end. You do not want to restate your central claim. You don't wanna just say it again. Athletes should not be paid or diversity should not be. Um, a criterion college admissions. Don't repeat that. You want to attach your topic to a broader concept, a bigger issue like freedom, safety, justice, equality, protection, correcting racism, equity. Okay. And so, um, um, you know, Taylor, maybe you could attach yours to fairness you know, and everybody having equal access to college. Um, and Andrew, maybe you could attach yours to, um, well, I guess yours could be fairness too. Um, or maybe, I think what you did is you attached yours to amateurism and the importance of amateurism. So maybe you could carry that through. That would be really good. <clears throat> so you want to broaden. Oh, and another thing you could do is end with a quote that deals with broader, not like evidence to prove, but um, let's see, one person in class was doing um, Confederate statues not being removed, and they had a really nice quote at the end about um, not wanting to strip a tree of its leaves, like tree, a tree being history and the leaves being items, and, you know, that a Confederate, taking away Confederate um statues is like taking the leaves off of a tree. And so that was nice, which leads to my next point. Um, you, it's great to have some pathos if you can. You can get pathos through language, through your word choice. Um, Andrew, your word choices have a certain intensity that convey in a funny way, like humor and confidence, <clears throat> like your uh, conviction. And so it can be through words. Um, you could also have an analogy or you could have a metaphor. Um, okay. And like, you know, Taylor, you could do a metaphor of a race and how crazy would it be in a race if some people got to, if the slower runners got to start further ahead. Okay. I'm thinking off the top of my head. That may not work, but that is one way of putting in pathos. Now, I'm not gonna mandate pathos, but pathos is definitely gonna get you points because that's emotional appeal. And what people remember, they want to know your ethos, that you're credible. 
They want logos. That's logical. But what people remember is stuff that, that elicits an emotional response. Okay. That's just a lesson for life. Um, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So, um, I would love for you to try to infuse some pathos in, in your conclusion. Okay, so that's what I want you to do. I want you to work on your intro and conclusion. Now, you do have your rough drafts back, and I do have a lot of comments on your, like, edits on your reputation and conclusion. So this would be a great time to make those edits to the conclusion. You don't necessarily have to do it to the reputation. But at this point, I'm not micromanaging you. I'm giving some general suggestions. And if it just is a monkey off your back to go ahead and make those edits to the reputation um, before you print this up and, and analyze your intro conclusion, you're certainly welcome to do that. Um, I will say one more thing. There are redundancies in your paper. I've set you up for redundancies. Um, mainly because I don't want you to have assumptions or logical holes. And um, we are going to start addressing those redundancies in the latter part of the week, but one step in that is going to be completing a major transitions worksheet, and I will be giving that to everybody on Wednesday. That's tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> but I'll give it to you on Thursday, and I'll probably give you a few words about that also. Okay, so this video suffices for your Tuesday, Wednesday. You're working on intro and conclusion. And um, I would really like for each of you to take the initiative to schedule a time to meet with me um, about your mini thesis where you have specific questions. And if you get stuck on something, I don't really see the value of us having a remote learners class, but um, I am available mornings. And I'm all, yeah, mornings. I've got people meeting with me at lunch and after school. So if you wanted to schedule like um, at 10 or 11 on um, Wednesday or Thursday, um, Friday, I'm going to be in the car so I could talk to you from 10 to 2. And then there's next week. But this is going to be due next week, April 1st for everybody, April 2nd for you. I would really love for you to get it on April 1st. I don't want you writing, doing anything on Good Friday, but, but you technically have until April 2nd. And you will submit your final paper on Google Classroom because you're a remote learner, but I will let you know that I am going to be doing printed copies. That will be how I'm grading. So Mrs. Shaw is going to print your mini thesis for me. And um, I, then you'll need to pick it up from school because it will come back as a printed copy, or I guess I can, I can send you a PDF, but I think it'd be nice for you to have a hard copy. Once you turn it in the beginning of April, I am going to take the whole month to grade. So it won't be quite as fast as I've been doing um, for my sanity. And um, yeah, so you guys are great at asking me questions. I trust you. Um, somebody told me yesterday, I met with them during lunch and they were a former remote learner. And they said, I just never wanted to ask you questions when I was a remote learner because I didn't want to bother you. I was like, oh my goodness. Let me just say to the both of you, Andrew and Taylor, you are not bothering me. I do not resent at all you being remote learners. So um, you need to advocate for yourself. You need to ask for what you need. Um, I love working with you. Okay, this video has gone longer than I thought. Um, okay. We'll, we'll talk soon. Bye.